Welcome to the HCI Family of Podcasts, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We share our own original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. Join us for practitioner-oriented content around all things leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with the HCI family of podcasts. Gary Cohen, welcome to the conversation today. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you. You're joining us from Colorado. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about executive coaching and waving that leadership magic wand to help us accomplish everything you know we want to accomplish. Like in the words of entrepreneurial ventures, each offering unique lessons in leadership and business strategy. His first major entrepreneurial success was with ACI Telecentrics, a national company which he co-founded with Rich Diamond. They grew the company from a modest beginning to a workforce of over 2,200 employees and successfully took it public on NASDAQ. This experience coupled with the challenges they faced, including the impactful decisions regarding business finances off that offers practical insights into the complexities of entrepreneurial growth. And now Gary is doing a lot of really great coaching work as well. Um, Gary, anything else you would like to highlight by way of your background or personal context before we just dive on in? No, that's a good overview. It, it felt like you've been eavesdropping on um, phone calls between me and prospective clients because I actually <laughs> ask a question like if you were to wave a magic wand, where would you be three years from now? And it sets out the goal of um, the coaching experience. Well, yeah, I, I think the the idea of this magic wand, I've, of course, everyone knows that we don't have that, but it, it unlocks like these aspirational goals and, um, you know, the aspirational vision that people may have. Like, what do they really want? What do they desire? And what's the gap between where they're at and where they want to go? That's a really important thing to be able to establish with somebody, especially a coaching client, uh, so that you then can start to put together, you know, a plan and, and talk through what it's going to take and what it's going to look like to get from point A to point Z or M or D or whatever the case may be, however far they're trying to go. Um, and so there is no magic wand, but but there is intentionality. Uh, there is goal setting. There is planning and strategy involved that will help us to get there. And so in a sense, I suppose you could say those elements are that magic wand. Yeah. And um, there's also this interesting thing that happens. And um, it's about when a, a client comes in and says, this is what I imagine. This is the envisioned future. Um and these are the challenges that I face in those. What we find is those are kind of the end results. They're not the what's mm -hmm. underneath. And what yeah. we often find, I like the, I like that story of um, Beowulf, where uh, it, it, these mercenaries were hired by the king or prince to save the town or the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And um, so Bear Wolf and his merry men come in and hunt down Gwendolyn, the, the beast, right? And they do it quite quickly. And then they're celebrating. And oops, they forgot about what gave birth to Gwendolyn, mm. the mother, the, right? And so it's really the mother of those things that coaching needs to go after. The, the, mother of the fears, the vulnerabilities in order to help somebody um, become fully themselves and be transformed. Well, yeah. And another way to think about it is, you know, the root causes, right? So you think about like the, the iceberg model. So often what people are focusing on is just that like 10, 20% above the surface of the water when the vast majority of everything that's going on is below the surface, that 80 to 90%. And it's the 80 to 90% that you can't see directly that actually is going to be the more impactful stuff, the, the stuff that's really driving, you know, in the case of something like the Titanic, this massive ship to sink. Um, if, if you want to, to have a new direction in life, 
focusing just on the surface level stuff isn't going to get you there. You got to look at the root causes. You have to understand, like you said, what's the mother of the challenges that they're facing or the gaps they're experiencing. Uh, and if they want to get you know, to a certain place, you have to be able to address those core things. Otherwise, you're going to end up chasing your tail, uh, trying to accomplish things and not understanding why you're not getting any traction. Yeah, I, I think you're right on. And we look at it at our organization that uh, that transformation is the work because a lot of coaching is around behavioral change, which is yeah. um, dealing with what's showing up at the surface. And yeah, sometimes that works, you know, like a technical or a tool fix, you know, like yeah. uh, a, a fun one that I've done before when somebody needs to learn gratitude, to give gratitude to others put 10 coins in one pocket and move every time you do it, move one to the other. And mm -hmm. by the end of the day, you should move all 10 coins, right? Behavioral fix, but it doesn't get at the foundational thing about what's going on for this leader that they find it difficult to really show gratitude in, in their heart, right? And so it's much deeper work to go further down in the proverbial um iceberg mm -hmm. to get to that work yeah sometimes another way i think of it is it, it can feel at least like the black hole of your soul <laughs> like you, you know because it, it it's it's a lot of deep work like you said uh it's it, there's usually not quick fixes um to to some of the things that people face and a lot of times I, you know you can speak to the demographics generally of, of like your coaching clients but a lot of times you're working with mid level leadership on up who tend to be a little bit more advanced in their career meaning you know they're a little bit older uh and they have a lifetime of experience which also means they have a lifetime of baggage and when you have a lifetime of baggage uh there's a lot you know in that you know proverbial black hole of like trying to self-discovery self-reflection trying to understand where you're at why you're at where you're at uh and it takes unpacking and and there's there's no shortcuts uh for that uh, you just you just have to do the work uh, otherwise again you're going to be kind of uh consistently just chasing your tail focusing on the the surface level stuff you've been around this territory before haven't you <laughs> just a little bit yeah yeah um i really like the adult development model um, mm. put out by Keegan and Leahy. I learned it from both them and Jennifer Garvey Berger. And the idea is, what are you subject to? And what? how do you make those object, right? So how do I move something that I don't even know is embedded in me, which is what you're talking about? You know, over the years, you embed different stories, narratives, ideas, beliefs, that you think are true yeah. because because you've never tested them right mm -hmm. um when when you did what somebody told you to do it worked so why question it but then what happens is you move up the organization the level of complexity of your life changes there yeah. are no easy answers right it's not straightforward and so when you make that move some of these um uh, ideas that you cemented into your being or that are subject that you're subject to no longer work. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the work in the coaching is how do you move what you're subject to to object? How do you, how do you not get triggered when somebody says something that you go, that's wrong. And then as a coach, you go, what's wrong about that? And the person goes, well, I have always believed that. Okay, so from the time you were born, you believed that. But how about now? What's going on for you? Does it actually work? And then you go out and test it and you go, it doesn't work so well. So mm -hmm. how do I go to object with it? So a, a story that I like to tell is uh, someone I know loved their wife, didn't love their marriage. And it was because their belief about marriage was around uh, the church, uh, the neighbors, their parents, their grandparents all created this belief of what a marriage was. But there's over a billion marriages. 
So why this one over all others? And so the work was to unbed that subject to being married so that the client could love being married, right? In a new way, in a way that only these two could understand, you know, the, the spouses. And that is multiplied by every belief system you have. Yeah. And it's layer upon layer, right? So oftentimes you you hear about like the the onion metaphor of peeling back the layers of the onion. So maybe if we really are thinking about what that leadership magic wand is, what that coaching magic wand is, maybe it's something as simple as consistent, persistent, critical self-reflection, like to just be able to go through that regular process, make it part of your daily routine that you're going to spend time in intentionality, reflecting on where you're at, why you do what you do. When, when emotions come up, why do you feel that way? When you're making a decision, what, what frames of reference, what, you know, different mental models are informing the way you're approaching that challenge or that question, right? And just being able to intentionally look at how you function within the different contexts you find yourself in each and every day, over time, I think that really can unlock a, a huge amount of hidden potential in a lot of people. Uh, I agree with you. And what we find is um, the waving the magic wand, those things get met, like in mm. coaching. They don't always mm. get met, but they mostly get met. And um, why do clients stay on? I mean, I have clients that have been with me for 10 years, and it's because they're lifelong learners, as am I. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is that whatever the peak is that they reached, what's the next peak? Mm -hmm. Right. And the first part is about that achievement. And the next part is that examination that you're talking about, which is to know that you have an outside confidant that will say literally anything with a small T of truth. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I never believe as the coach, you're right. You know, you have understanding about something you've seen patterns before but you can't it, you can't have the big t like i know this it's it's really so the client knows that you're not hiding um as maybe their employees are mm -hmm. because they feel for whatever reason they don't feel like they can speak up honestly and so here's a person in your life who has no agenda other than revealing what others can't reveal or not can't, but choose not to. Right. Reveal. Yeah. Something you may have worked with in the past. Um, it, it's something I often share. It's a simple tool I share with my students all the time called the Jahari window. And mm -hmm. essentially what you're trying to do is, is through reflection and feedback and, and seeking input from other people, you're trying to shrink the hidden window. It's, it's a, a quadrant system with between the knowns and the unknowns to self and others. And you're trying to expand the regions of what is known to yourself and to other people, which then expands your known window and it, it reduces your unknown window. We can never completely eliminate the unknown window. We, and, and, you know, by definition, we don't know what's in the unknown window, but that's the problem is so often we, because of lack of open and transparent communication, because maybe we're not open to feedback, because maybe there's, there's, you know, not a psychologically safe workplace environment where people feel like they can give you honest input. Um, if we don't practice regular self-reflection, our known window shrinks, can shrink really small, and that unknown window grows. And that's where you have just increased, you know, exponentially increased levels of uncertainty uh, in both your own career, your personal life, but also in the success of your business. Uh, very simple concept, simple tool. Uh, but I, I found that something like that can be really helpful for, for individuals to understand the power behind seeking regular input. 360 feedback being one example, seeking, you know, practicing regular self-reflection, intentionality and in how you be with and interact with those around you. All of those things, pretty basic, but people often don't do them consistently because it takes time, effort, uh, and we're not always good about being consistent with those sorts of things. Yeah, one of our values at CO2 is uh, making the unknown known and the definition of it is um, liberating ourselves from our history. Mm. And 
that's both for ourselves as coaches, because otherwise we get stuck, mm -hmm. and for our clients. How do you liberate yourself from that history? Going back to what we were talking about, about complexity, it is finding both the blind spots that are known uh, to others and unknown to others and unknown to yourself and try to um, bring those forward so that you can actually um, have an opinion about them and, and shift and change in a way um, that is unique to you. Because, you know, this notion that there is a way to be a leader, yep. um, that doesn't um, sit well with me. It's yeah, what me neither. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like what is unique to you? Because I have I've coached over three hundred CEOs um, over the twenty years I've been coaching, and uh, there is no blueprint of of why they were successful. Right. So it's really helping them unlock the part of themselves that needs to show, um, and. Yeah. Um, be a light for 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 those who follow, which which really um, dovetails onto another thought. We did a um, um, strategic planning, um, looking at using innovation, and mm -hmm. one of the things we found was we you know NPS scores, um, Net Promoter Score, where you're trying to identify how customers or employees feel about you, right? Um, we do it, but it doesn't really work well. Okay, and what we found is the best measurement for coaching was mm -hmm. when somebody who's in the ecosystem of the leader comes up to you um, just haphazardly and says, you've changed my life with whatever you're doing with my boss, with my parent. And I can think of one where I was at a bar mitzvah and the daughter of a client walks up and she says, I don't think you know who I am, and, but you may. You have totally changed my life, my family's life, in my dad's life. Mm. And I just wanted to thank you. And oh my God, the goosebumps, right? And this is our measurement. So as a, as a firm, how many times do we get the ripple effect from that leader that we worked with? Because, you know, you have a halo effect as a coach. They're paying you a lot of money to talk honestly to them, right? So when you ask them, how am I doing? And they keep working with you. There's a pretty good chance they're going to give you a 10 out of 10 on a score mm -hmm. system, but it mm -hmm. really doesn't tell you at all the ripple effect in the organization. Another one, it was a Fortune 100 uh, company in which the, the leader asked if I would um, do a presentation. I'm like, sure, I was honored. You know, So we go out to Vegas and I'm in the bathroom and I'm cornered by three of the <laughs> leader's people. And they're like, Gary, you don't know us. Same thing, right? And okay, I know of you. Yes. And whatever you're doing, we know you can't say anything. But whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Just promise us you'll keep doing it because there was such a dramatic change, right? And again, the goosebumps, right? Because that ripple that coaching has from the person that you're actually coaching to all the people who get affected by it. Yeah, I, I love that. I love focusing on the seeds that are planted, the ripples that are having a broader reach of impact. Uh, you, you've you referred to this a few times already in our conversation, but maybe we can take a few minutes and just a little bit more explicitly talk about some of the patterns you're seeing, because uh, you talked about like even having clients that have worked with you for 10 years, that's a long arc of, of development, right? For that individual. Um, and you work with a lot of coaches or a lot of executives and leaders across a wide variety of organizations. What are some of the types of patterns you're seeing in terms of the challenges they're facing, uh, the types of help they need, the guidance they're seeking, um, and anything else related to that, that you think would be helpful to share? Yeah. So there was a, a gentleman by the name of Claire Graves who came up with spiral dynamics, um, yeah. which probably the best researched um, study on human behaviors as a group. And um, one of those patterns, one of those stages is called the achievist. Our clients are almost all achievists, at least when they begin with us. Mm -hmm. They think that there is something out there for them to accomplish that peak going after, right? And that somebody else may know the answer. They don't need to know the answer. They just need to know somebody does that can teach them 
how to do whatever that thing is that they're trying to do and accomplish. And, you know, they're achievement oriented, they're strategic thinkers, they're competitive, uh, they're rational, they're objectives. They, they don't mind people around them succeeding with them, as long as it's not at a cost of their not succeeding. And this is, they're very self-reliant. Um, and those are the clients, right? And they're lifelong learners. And so we really are clear about who the clients of our company are. There may be, you know, there's certainly a whole host of people wanting coaching, but this is where we really excel. And what I find often is the client comes in overwhelmed. They've grown mm -hmm they've grown their organization or their department or whatever that is to a point of being overwhelmed. And they haven't seen the switch yet of seeing how do I move this off of me? How do I realize the talent needs to be around and blow me so that I don't have to work like that. And until that gets resolved, there is no other coaching piece to the formula, right? Because mm -hmm. If somebody's in overwhelm and you say, here's a suggestion, or have you considered this, or what are you doing about this? It, it, it's, just, you know, it's another thing to do. Yeah, so the yeah. first thing is how do you free up time? And I'm, I'm recalling very early in my coaching career, uh, a CEO who said, I just, I, I, I know I need you. I just don't have time for it. And so I said, <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll give you back three times the time you give me. So if you give me three hours a month, Okay, I'll give you nine back. Okay. Turns out I gave her 40 back within three months. <laughs> and then we worked together for like five years, right? <laughs> but it was that 40 hours of freedom that one, one, you know, it wins you over because it's like, oh, I have a life again. And now you also have that space and freedom to operate. Um, the other thing is that they're all lifelong learners. They, they, they read books, um, they do audios, uh, podcasts. It's hard to keep up actually for me because for me, my view is if, if a client mentions a book and they really love it, I should read it. So yeah. <laughs> you should see my, my book list <laughs> and my audio list. And it's, uh, it's quite funny. Um, I think and another thing is the balance between ego and humility. I call it walking the ridge line. So on one side of the ridge line is humility. And if you don't have it, have some of it, people aren't really going to care for you as the leader. But if you have too much of it, you just don't show up. You know, uh, the people that you're leading want to believe that the, you you have a greater vision, that there's some ego there of something that you're trying to accomplish. If you have too much ego, look out. We've all seen those leaders, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes, well, not sometimes, often, it starts with the, the client coming in with a high level of humility and not enough ego. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I always warn them, there's going to be a time in which I become stupid. And what, <laughs> I, and what I like to say is, if you think I'm stupid now, that's fine. But normally, you wouldn't hire me if you thought that. So you hire me thinking that I have something to teach you. And I'm constantly learning, reading all the things we just talked about, right? So it's unlikely I became dumber as we work together. But somehow, at some moment, everything I say is dumb. It won't work. You did it. You don't know. You don't know what I'm going through. And that's when I know the ego has come in, mm -hmm. right? And, um, and I say, when that happens, I will tell you. And sometimes when I tell them, I'm fired. Right. And it's yeah. part of the deal. And and then you wait. <laughs> One time I was fired three times in a meeting <laughs> and then hired by the end. Right. <laughs> because they did not like what I had to say. Um, yeah. So I think it's those are patterns that I, I see. And the last one I'd say is on accountability. <laughs> it is the single um, one that I think everything often um, most of what has been taught on accountability doesn't work. Mm. Uh, it's like, here's the technical way. Let's use Monday, Asana, and all those are important. I like them. I use them. Okay. What they don't say is you don't agree with the person. And I'll, I'll go into that. So what I mean by that is 
somebody comes into your office and says, hey, um, I'd like to do this, this, and this. What do you think? And if you think it's good, you usually go, yeah, that's a good idea, right? The problem is you just took away accountability, mm -hmm. right? Because if it doesn't work, you said that was a good idea, right? If it does work, you took away the pride that somebody has in accomplishing something for themselves. So instead, I encourage leaders to say, I, I look forward to seeing how that turns out. Now, I'm not saying that every time somebody walks into your office, you agree with them. You'd ask them a lot of questions. And yeah. if you can't think of questions that help them understand a direction, and I don't mean lead them to a direction, but help them understand a thing that you think will get in the way, then you haven't figured out the right question to ask. But at the end, the only time you should be giving that affirmation is when the project or the thing is done, the objective is met and it turned out great. Mm -hmm. Wow, that was fabulous, right? And if it doesn't, wondering what you learned from that one, <laughs> right? But that's how you push accountability. I can tell a leader this and it will take years for it to actually go into effect. And then they wake up one day and they go, that's what you meant. <laughs> Yeah. And, and being able to, to speak the hard truths to somebody, uh, it can be challenging and it can mean that they're not going to be happy with you, at least for a time. And you can get fired. And that, I think that's part of the deal, though, to be an effective coach. You have to um, be able to to speak your mind. You have to be able to say the things that other people wouldn't be willing to say uh, and just to be comfortable with that. Um, so I, I appreciate all of that that you shared, Gary. I note the time. I'm going to have to let you go here in just a minute. But before we wrap things up for today, I wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, your team, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Really easy to find. It's uh, Gary B. Cohen on LinkedIn or CO2 Coaching uh, is another place to, to find us. Uh, you can call us at 612-928-4747. And happy to talk to anybody if they are trying to elevate to that next peak in their career, life, um, business, and bringing that organization higher. Thank you so much, Gary. It's been a real pleasure. I encourage the audience to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Gary can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the podcast. We hope you stay healthy and safe and please join us again soon.